leaders and healers, gamers and clamors, ladies and gentlemen from around the universe, from around the globe, from around the community. Welcome to the Power, Purpose, and Passion podcast. I am your host, Anthony Cheem, life coach, trainer, speaker, author, musician, singer, songwriter, and here to serve you with the greatest material, wisdom, and love that I can possibly serve you with and give to you so you can upgrade your life, so you can update your life on a consistent basis, sharpen your wisdom, sharpen your body, sharpen your soul and spirit so you can show up as the best, greatest possible version of yourself, consistently growing, consistently updating, so you can advance in your life and every area of your life consistently, every day, every weekend, week out, and uh, whatever that may be for you. And, and ultimately, what this is all about, so you can claim your power, clarify your purpose, and cultivate your deepest, widest, and highest passions. And then ultimately, ultimately, pay it forward and inspire others to do the exact same. So thank you for joining us today. And we're going to continue this journey on the health and vitality kick till the end of March. And with the past three, four weeks, we have been talking about nutrition, what you can fuel your body, body with, you know, oxygen. We talk about water. We talk about supplements. We talk about the five S's of super vitality, you know, from salads to, to smoothies, to squeeze, freshly squeezed juices, to superfoods and supplements and all these other things that we can do to enhance our body, our energy, our mind, so that we can have more energy to do the things we love to do and not necessarily require as much sleep. We, we don't get tired during the day and all those things are going to be very important. So we're going to trans, we're going to, last week we talked about, I think it was, what was last Friday there, Cam? We talked about uh, the power of rest and recuper recuperation or the power of realigning, realignment and what sort of things you can do to realign your body, your mind, stuff like using chiropractic and osteopathic care. Uh, Bruno was on, he was talking about Reiki practitioner, ART, acupuncture, uh, taking cold showers, cold baths, all these things that we can do to enhance our life so we can literally uh, retune our body, do like a, a, a like a, a body tune-up. Not just, you know, we, we get our car to do a tune-up, we update our phones, but we have to update and realign our bodies. Uh, and so our subtle energies, again, we talked about it uh, in many of these podcasts, we have three bodies basically, gross body, physical body, and we had a subtle body, a mental, emotional body, and then a spiritual soul body, which is our causal body. And so we want to work out, realign, activate all three bodies, exercise them, allow them to rest in realignment and, um, you know, getting the right amount of sleep, meditation, you know, prayer, a prayer for you. If that's one of the things you can do to realign your, yourself. Um, we also talked about what, else, what was the other thing we talked about? I think there's seven things going on vacation, having fun, um, you know, yoga, Tai Chi, all these things that we can do. You just basically pick one, listen to that podcast, but we're going to talk about today, the power of muscle and why it's so important and scientifically proven why why gaining muscle through weight training strength training is the number one thing you can do for your body in terms of activity and i will put this up against anything and anyone so before we get into it i'd like to introduce my power partner in crime <laughs> my power partner in rhyme <laughs> i like to kind of do little things like that i just made that up now and hey, crime on, <laughs> Chatham. how you doing man i'm doing very very well um Fantastic. you know my entire life i've always been you know it's funny i was overweight as a kid and then i lost a ton of weight and uh i've just been there ever since i've just been skinny and lanky as everybody likes to say ever since um so i'm curious to see what um, working towards building muscle mass could do because I'm just like long and <laughs> and all over the place uh, you know yes. a very slender build I have yeah. so yeah. yeah no I'm curious to see what this can do and I mean yeah. I'm always looking for what I can do to become my greatest version because at the end oh. of the day that's what we're doing here like yeah. that's why you're listening yeah. um, don't exactly. kid yourself you're trying to get better you're trying to become more and uh, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that so let's get into it well there's everything right with that let's face it there's everything right and it's available to you you wouldn't say to your phone hey a new version of your phone which makes your phone better more functional more effective you wouldn't say no to that why would you say no to that when especially what's going to make your life better and so you know people listen to this podcast i say this often you don't listen to this podcast or watch it or read my books or whatever it is you don't attend these things and sit down in your and, and take away from your time from your day so you can go home and be the same person. You want to be better. You want to be a better father, a better mother, a better brother, a better sister, a better coach, a better teacher, a better accountant, a better whatever it is that you are, whatever role you're playing, you want to be better. And I can tell you one of the most fundamental things you can do from an activity approach, a strategic approach, is, is build up your body, which is so important. And, and the power of muscle. I'm going to talk about the 10 biomarkers of aging specifically. And 
let me tell you, let me preface this. I know I've talked about this in other podcasts before, but each of the 10 biomarkers that I'm going to talk about quickly, I'm going to read off this book here, is directly affected by weight training, all 10 biomarkers. It is the only type of activity that literally physical activity that you can do on a consistent basis that will either slow down those time biomarkers or completely reverse them, completely reverse them. So weight training, get a trainer, start weight training, start making the physical upgrade. Yes, the fuel will enhance your muscle mass, all those great things, yes. But unless you actually put your body in demand, like put demand on your body, let me tell you something, it's not, it, the fuel is going to be great, but let me tell you something, you want to upgrade your body. It's like, it's like taking your car and then souping it up, right? Only you don't have to spend money on souping your car up and, and adding things to your body. Weight training is your direct way you can soup up your car or your Lamborghini or your, you know, your, your Volvo into a superhuman computer, superhuman vehicle. So you can transform your life and then basically move towards whatever goal you're looking to achieve, to attain, to command and conquer. So the 10 bar markers are as follows. Bone density, body temperature regulation, basal and metabolic rate, blood sugar tolerance, a, a decline in muscle muscle strength, a fat the fat content of the body, aerobic capacity, cholesterol and L HDL ratios, a decline in muscle mass, and number ten blood pressure. Now I'm just going to read off just quick things off each of the ten. The first one, bone density. As people age, their bones tend to lose calcium, making the skeletal skeleton weaker, less dense, and more brittle, which typically leads to osteoporosis. So that's big for women. And let me tell you, a lot of doctors out there recommend to a lot of women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even in their 80s to start exercising with weights, okay? It will literally, it's one of the most non-invasive ways to slow down osteoporosis or reverse it completely. Body temperature regulation, number two, the body is supposed to maintain an inter internal temperature of 98.6 degrees. But as people grow older, they tend to lose muscle and the heat that muscle provides. Their body temperature becomes more vulnerable to hot and cold, which often leads to illness. Number three, basal metabolic rate. Our rate of energizing or determining how many calories our body requires to sustain their internal processes declines by 2% per decade after the age of 20. Okay, your basal metabolic rate is basically uh, how many calories your body burns. Now, as you get, get older, every 10 years, you're, if you continue to ingest maximum amount of calories, your basal metabolic rate, it goes down and you end up gaining more weight. Okay, number four, blood sugar tolerance. The body's ability to use glucose in the bloodstream declines with age and thereby raises the risk of type 2 diabetes, which is the third or fourth most common disease in North America. Number five, a decline in muscle mass strength. O older people are less strong because of the gradual deterioration of muscles and motor nerves, which typically begins at the age of 30. Number six, the fat co content of the body. Between the ages of 20 and 65, the average person doubles his or her ratio of fat to muscle. This process is exacerbated by a sedentary lifestyle and overeating. Exercise often retards appetite, and conversely, a lack of exercise can cause one to be hungrier and thus to eat more often. Number seven, aerobic capacity. The body's ability to use oxygen efficient, efficiently dis declines by 30 to 40% by the time people reach the age of 65. Number eight, cholesterol and HDL ratios. Around age 50, People see a decrease in their HDL or high density lipoproteins, the good cholesterol, which protects the body against heart disease, and an increase in their LDL. LDL stands for low density lipoproteins, the bad cholesterol, a phenomenon that dramatically greatens the risk of heart attack. Number nine, a, de a decline in muscle mass. The average, the average North American loses 6.6 .6 pounds of muscle with each decade after young adulthood, and the rate of loss increases after the age of 45. But only if you want, uh, if only if one doesn't do anything to replace it. Number ten, the final biomarker of aging: blood pressure. The majority of people show a steady increase in blood pressure with each decade of age. And here's the quote that I get from this book here. It's actually this book's called uh, "Maximum Contraction Training." It's by a guy named John Little. He's a Canadian guy. He's been in the bodybuilding industry for decades, and he's been basically studying the science of muscle mass. And this was forwarded by Tony Robbins, the great Tony Robbins. And the 10 biomarkers he was explaining is from this book. And he says at the very end of, of, of explaining the 10 biomarkers, he says this, strength training is the only, only in, in bold and in ita italic, 
is the only activity that's been proven scientifically to positively affect all 10 biomarkers of aging. That is incredible. I've been doing weight training for since I was probably about 15 or 16 years old. And let me tell you something. Here's the great news. You don't have to go two hours at the gym. That's the great news. You don't have to. You could literally get the same effect from two hours off 20 to 30 minutes, maybe even less. This one actually with the great book, Max Contraction Training, it actually talks about the scientifically proven program for muscle mass and minimum amount of time. And literally, you can do one set to two sets to failure and you can get per muscle group and you basically get maximum muscle. Now, for the people that want to get, uh, people that want to gain muscle, may want to look into that. And two principles that I follow when it comes to muscle mass building in terms of exercise, we won't talk about the exercise and demonstrating exercise, but I will tell you two principles that I follow with all my clients that I do with myself. Number one, you've got to go heavy. You've got to go heavy. If you're if you women out there, uh, use two pound weights. It's not going to work. You got to go past your comfort zone, and I'm talking way past your comfort zone. And number two, you got to go to failure, to exhaustion, where you lift lift something up over your head as many times as you can, whether bench press or rows or squats or whatever lunges, and you go heavy and you go hard, and then you go to failure to exhaustion. That's gonna that last rep is going to basically 95 percent of the good stuff that you're going to create in your exercise routine is that last rep where you go to failure, where you literally can't do anymore. That last rep is going to determine that. So um, any questions there, 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 Cam, I, you know, I know yeah, uh, that quite a bit. I just had one more question about, yeah. uh, do you need to buy weights or get a gym membership or can you work out with gravity or find a way to do some of this stuff oh, without weights? Yes. I'm just wondering. Great question. You, you can work out from your home. You could use your own body weight. You can use, uh, you can get it, go get a gym. You can hire a trainer. You can go to the park. I mean, I demonstrated that on 100 Huntley Street when I was on. You can take those fitness bands, excuse me, those resistance bands, wrap them around a pole and start doing some chest press and chest pulls. There's many videos on YouTube you can actually go to for different types of exercises. But the key is the, the principles are timeless. Practices are timely. Weight training, whatever you decide to do, two principles to keep in mind. Go heavier than you're normally used to. If, if you know, you use a weight and you do 10 times, you're like, uh, it's not really that hard. Then go up. I wouldn't suggest going higher reps. I would suggest going heavier weight, lower reps. Make sure, make sure you hire a trainer again or someone that's going to coach you to properly perform the exercises or you don't hurt yourself, of course. But I'm telling you, I have people in 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s who I weight train who I still push. I don't like, I'm not easy on them. I still make sure I, I push them to failure where that last rep where like, I'm not sure if I can do this last rep. And then I, I spot them, I assist them. And that is key. Even for myself, if I can't do a full rep, I'll do half reps to get those extra two reps in there to failure. So my body's like overloaded. It's going heavy. It's going hard. It's, it, it, it's going to failure. That's the key going to exhaustion. That is the key. And let me tell you something. I'm not the only one uh, that, that promotes this. All the Tony Robbins does Ken Wilber, who is the, the leader of leaders. He talks about if there's three things that he says that you could do to enhance and upgrade your life. It is number one, meditation, number two, weight training, and number three, what he calls shadow work. And those are his top three things, basic things that you can do. And we've had, we've talked about all three of those things in this, in this podcast. So let me tell you, weight training he says number two, number two. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to finish off with a study that they did um, where they took a group of meditators who were meditating for 90 minutes a day. And group A, they had, they had them meditating for 90 minutes and had these advanced meditators grading on their, on their progress of meditation. And, the, and then group B, they had them doing weight training for 45 minutes and meditating for 45 minutes. And they wanted to see how that would impact uh, their meditation. And the, the, the instructors who were grading the meditators, they didn't know that they were doing this. And it's not like they were doing 90 minutes of meditation and 45 minutes of weight training. They did the same amount, 45 minutes of weight training, 45 minutes of meditation. And the other group did 90 minutes of meditation. And after I think six, nine, and 12 months, hands down, the group that did weight training and meditation, cross-trained, did both, became better meditators in the long run. What does that tell you? That we got to work out the physical gross body through weight training. And we can, we're going to talk about other things like aerobic exercise, max contraction, sorry, um, uh, uh, afterburn training, stuff like that. Little things you can do. Even little things like going for a walk for like 30 minutes has as much effect on your psyche as something like Zoloft or a flexor or, you know, on, on your endorphin kick. Let me tell you that. And then there's another book out there called, um, oh, uh, I'm forgetting it. Um, 
Spark. I think it's called Spark, and it's by a psychiatrist who who prescribes exercise, aerobic exercise for their for their uh, for their patients. He actually gives. I think he gives even gives them the option: Do you want to go on drugs or do you want to go on an exercise program? And they're actually the patients are often taken back by it. Anyways, point is, start weight training, start doing it. I'm telling you, like it's it, three times a week, 20 minutes uh, a day, or hire a trainer, go twice a week for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is, and just go, just do it. Trust me, it will be the greatest gift you can give your, your body, and it's not that hard to do. And in terms of, you can go on YouTube. We have access to YouTube. How many trainers out there? They're going to put on YouTube exercise programs. Hire guys, join a gym, join a boot camp, CrossFit, whatever it is. Just do it. So I hope you guys got a lot of this program. Um, if you like it, comment it. Uh, you know, subscribe to our you know channel on iTunes and all these other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So um, if you loved it, great. We love the fact that you're listening and hopefully you, you guys are getting a lot of value out of these, out of these podcasts. So to your continued upgrade and evolution, live it up with power, purpose, and passion. God bless you guys to your endeavors and your dreams. May they come true.